This is the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief, keeping you informed about the happenings in Annapolis and the area. Local news, local sports, local events, local opinion, and of course, local weather. The Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief starts now. Good morning. It's Wednesday, November 13th, 2019. This is John Frenet, and this is your Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. In a series of tweets yesterday afternoon, the Anne Arundel County Police Department advised that there was a man at the intersection of Crane Highway and Crane Court in Glen Burnie that had called 911 advising that he had been shot and his Toyota 4Runner had been stolen at that intersection. The only description the victim could give of the suspect was a large black male with dark clothing and a yellow construction vest. At this point, the suspect is still at large and the police are asking anybody that has any information to give them a call at 410 410- 222-8610. The victim in this case was transported to a local hospital with what are believed to be non-life-threatening injuries. Annapolis Mayor Gavin Buckley's proposed land swap for the public works facility has hit a major snag. According to a memo sent out from the mayor to the city council and the task force chairman, he is asking the task force to put everything they have done so far on hold based on a review by the Maryland Department of the Environment. That Maryland Department of Environment review indicates that the soil underneath the current site on Spa Road is far more contaminated than initially inspected. In the memo, the mayor did say the task force should pause all activity until January while the council makes a decision on how to proceed, and I'm not quite sure how they're going to get that done. They only have two more meetings before the end of the year, and they are busy trying to push through the short-term rental bill. But in the memo sent out, Buckley said that MDE advised that continued use of the field as an athletic field would not require the city to enter into any type of a cleanup plan. Remediation would be minimal and relatively inexpensive, with the likely maximum treatment being the adding of a layer of soil and monitoring for methane gas. The rub comes if it were used for residential development. The MDE staff said that the clay cap over which the housing could be built would not meet the MDA's remediation requirements, and they would require excavation of the contaminated fill material 15 feet below the current surface of the field as it sits today. Nobody could give an estimate on that, but in the original deal with the builder, Buckley had the builder paying $500,000 toward the remediation. Both MDE staff and the city seem to agree that it would be much, much, much more than the $500,000. We've also learned that the mayor had all but given up on this land swap and actually was looking at buying a piece of property on Hudson Street to house the public works facility and being able to still sell the Spa Road property to the developer. But I don't know how that's all going to work out right now if there are going to be millions and millions of dollars in remediation necessary for that site. Perhaps Public Works will not move from there at all. Some great news for commuters, but it's not going to happen right away. Maryland and Virginia are coming together, and the governors of both states made an announcement yesterday that they are going to be widening the American Legion Bridge, which connects Northern Virginia with Maryland's Montgomery County. It would also widen the Beltway for about three miles between the George Washington Parkway in Virginia and River Road here in Maryland. And it is also going to include a path to walk or bike over the Potomac River, similar to what they've got on the Wilson Bridge down in Alexandria. Both governors did say that no homes or businesses would be taken for the road widening. That remains to be seen. According to the Secretary of Transportation for Maryland, Pete Ron, they expect to break ground on this project in 2022, with construction likely taking five to six years. Price tag on this, baby? One billion dollars. I sound like Austin Powers. Hey, we hate them, and I'm talking about unsolicited calls. And Security.org just did a new study on what Americans think about it. Unwanted calls are taking up 66% of all FCC complaints in 2018. And when security.org looked from 2018 to 2018, there were some trends and Maryland came out on top. Maryland ranks number one for the state with the most FCC complaints in every category of 734.8 per 100,000 residents. We also topped the list ranking number two for the state with the most unwanted calls, 351 per 100,000 residents. And that's a 13.5% increase in four years. And nationwide, complaints for unwanted calls between 2017 and 2018 jumped 27%, but most other complaints for other categories actually went down. If you want to make a complaint, you can voice it at FCC.gov slash consumers. And I'll tell you, I personally am so close to ditching my landline. I just looked between yesterday and the day before. 19 out of the 19 phone calls I received were spam, either identified by Verizon 
or by the service that I pay for called Nomo Robo. And I was just about to say it is Ticket Tuesday, but I realized that we had that holiday on Monday, so it's actually Ticket Wednesday. I forgot it yesterday. Again, courtesy of our friends over at the Rams Head, we have two tickets to that 70s party with Superfly Disco, and they are going to have the dance floor open there. We do have two seats at the Good Tables. This is Saturday's show at 8.30 p.m. Doors open at 7.30. If you are into the 70s dance party, this is the show for you to see. And to win these tickets, I'm going to go out on a limb and suggest that anybody that wants to do this was probably alive in the 70s. So see if you can dig up a picture of yourself in the 70s and email me a picture. I'll look through the ones that are submitted and we'll pick a winner tonight at six o'clock. All right, that is about it for the top news today. Please make sure you're checking out ionanapolis.net throughout the day because we do update it throughout the day. If you are someplace where you can give us a rating or a review, please do that. That's how we grow. And also let your friends and family and colleagues know about us. All right, now hang tight. We've got George Young with your local DMV weather forecast. He's coming up in just one minute. But first, this from our friends up at Red Maryland. Hello, friends. This is Brian Griffiths from RedMaryland.com, inviting you to the 2020 RedMaryland.com Leadership Conference, Saturday, January the 11th, 2020, at the Doubletree Hotel in Annapolis. Confirmed speakers include Congressman Andy Harris, Commerce Secretary Kelly Schultz, Transportation Secretary Pete Ron, Senator J.B. Jennings, Senator Steve Hershey, Senator Justin Reedy, Delegate Nick Kipke, Delegate Kathy Schlega, Delegate Lauren Arakan, WBAL Radio's Andrew Langer and Jerry Rogers, Maryland Federation of Republican Women President Diana Water, Maryland Young Republicans Chairman Maria Sophia, Lauren Bogley from the Maryland Right to Life, and so much more. Tickets are available at redmarylandconference.com. Sponsorship opportunities and vendor tables are also available. That's redmarylandconference.com. Don't miss out on your opportunity to attend the redmaryland.com leadership conference Saturday, January the 11th in Naples. Once more, buy your tickets now at redmarylandconference.com. Going out? You need the most up-to-date local weather. Here's George Young from DMV Weather in Annapolis with today's forecast. Hey everyone, this is George with DMV Weather, and this is your Eye on Annapolis forecast for Wednesday, November 13th. Yesterday's cold front delivered as expected with windy skies, much colder temps, and even a few scattered snowflakes across Anne Arundel County. And the cold is here to stay for several days with this morning's 20s, only leading to afternoon highs in the 30s, which is 20 to 25 degrees below average, as normal highs are still upper 50s to near 60 degrees. Then it's 40s for highs tomorrow, followed by upper 40s to maybe lower even mid-50s on Friday, before a reinforcing shot of cold air brings more highs in the 40s both Saturday and Sunday, with AM lows each day through Sunday likely in the 20s for most in the area. So keep the jackets and hats and gloves close by, as they'll be needed day and night for at least the next five days. Okay, that's it for today. This is George Young of DMV Weather. Make it a great day out there, and be sure to get our free app on all of your devices by searching for DCMDVA Weather in the Apple or Google App Stores, and also follow us on Facebook and Twitter and on our website at dmvweather.com so you can always stay weather-informed. Have you ever been to the Annapolis Mall when it opens for the day? Maybe you've noticed the line of folks waiting to get into the Apple Store. As you may know, I'm a Mac user, and today's episode of the Daily News Brief, in fact, all of the episodes of the Daily News Brief, have been produced right here on my Mac computer. What you might not know about is MacMedics. They were founded here in Annapolis in 1989, and they are an Apple-authorized premium service provider, the only one in the Baltimore, Annapolis, D.C. area. And what that means to you is that they repair all Apple devices, including the iPhone screens and batteries, all without an appointment. And most repairs are done the same day, usually within two hours. They also sell everything except the iPhone and the watch for the same price as Apple. I don't know why you would go anywhere else. Give them a call at 410-757-MACS, or if you're not into the whole letter thing, 410-757-6227. Stop by their retail store in Severna Park on Benfield Road, or their service center in Lanham, right off of Route 50. Or you can always check them out online at macmedics.com. I'll tell you, they've saved me quite a few times, and I know they can save you. You've been listening to the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. 
Tell your friends and colleagues this is the podcast where you can keep up on the latest with what's going on in Annapolis. And also tell them about our website, ionanapolis.net, where you can find even more information. This podcast comes to you every Monday through Friday at 7 a.m., keeping you informed with the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. And take a moment to listen to our other podcast, The Maryland Crabs, released every Thursday at noon.